Welcome to the Sisterhood of Sweat. It's Let It Rip Friday. Hi, I'm Linda Mitchell, 54-year-old elite obstacle racer, award-winning fitness competitor, gym owner, and author. Welcome to the Sisterhood of Sweat podcast, where we will approach the difficult topics of life, interview inspiring guests, and bring empowerment to all. This community is a place where we can be who we are instead of who others want us to be. Let's get started. And now, a word from our sponsors, Essential Formulas. Now more than ever, it is important to have a healthy immune system. Many health professionals agree that probiotics are a leading natural therapy for boosting immune health. Why? Because 70% of your body's immune cells reside in the GI tract. By taking a superior probiotic daily, like Dr. O'Hara's probiotics with their postbiotic metabolites, you can enhance your overall immune system and immune response. For additional immune support, get RegActive's immune formula to boost your glutathione levels. Since our glutathione levels go down if we feel stressed, maintaining glutathione levels is a key factor for natural defense. For a short-term immune boost, try Dr. O'Hara's Propolis Plus, which provides probiotic and immune support and includes Brazilian green propolis for superior antioxidant support and vitamin E, astaxanthin, and flax oil. Be proactive about your immune health. Ask your retailer today about Dr. O'Hara's probiotics, RegActive Immune Formula, and Dr. O'Hara's Propolis Plus today. Please don't forget to subscribe, rate, and write a quick review. This helps the Sisterhood of Sweat get noticed on iTunes. And I truly appreciate your support so much. We have been consistently hitting top 100 and top 50 for the last six months. If you want to help get my message out even more and impact more people's lives all over the globe, please post a picture of my show and tag me at Sisterhood of Sweat on any social media platform. It would mean the world to me. It is my goal to create a like-minded community of women who build each other up to create huge wins in their businesses, relationships, and life. Every Wednesday and Friday, I will be dropping a new show to ignite your life, fuel your passion, and give you the courage and confidence to go after what you want unapologetically. And as we start rolling into this holiday, uh, we're getting close to the new year, 2022. And I'm pretty sure we're all tired of being afraid and feeling like our dreams are canceled. So I want to talk about big dreams today. Big dreams are what move the needle forward. When you start dreaming big, things really start to happen that never happened when you were dreaming small or playing small or hiding. (laughs) Yes, I'm talking to you. (laughs) How many of us hide in our dreams and we're afraid? Who am I to do this? Who's going to listen? Who wants what I have? I don't know what to say, what to post. I don't know how to run a business. I don't know how to do construction, whatever it is. You're stuck in that. But as soon as you decide the universe begins to open up, whenever you jump, and you take that leap, and you show your dreams, you mean them, and that you're serious about them, the net appears, the universe reaches out to respond to the action that you are taking. And I would suggest that most of the time, we are embarrassed to say our big dreams out loud. And if you Start dreaming. Do the perfect day scenario where you write out your dreams on the clock and you write down on your perfect day what you dream of doing. And then you need to do that at least three times because the first two, 
you are not dreaming big enough. But by the third time, if you write those dreams down and you feel embarrassed to say them out loud, you have hit your mark. You have hit your mark. It is the big dreams that are hidden in our heart most of the time that move us forward that are meant for us. They're written in our hearts. We have the gifts to see these things through. Don't let anyone define for you what you're capable of, what you can achieve. Many times we'll tell our dreams to somebody and because they can't see them, they may cast doubt or a shadow on your dreams, or tell you why it's not possible. But if you don't even know what's within you, how can they know what's within you? I didn't even find my voice. I didn't even start writing till I was in my 40s. I said, I'm not a writer, but I'll take a stab at it. And, uh, you know, I was in the top 10 diet books in 2009 with mentor Anne Louise Gittleman. Then I wrote two of my own books and I wrote a column for Ms. Fitness Magazine for over 15 years. It was my column. And I wrote cover stories. I wanted to interview Suzanne Summers and I found a connection. Somebody had a daughter that worked at QVC and it seemed like a stretch, right? I made it happen. I wanted it so bad. I got to interview Suzanne Summers and Dara Therese, the Olympic swimmer. That was, I believe she was 43 when she won. And uh, so many cool people because I just started dreaming and I started taking action on what my dreams were. And it all starts with, having the dream first, we have to start with having the dream, calling it out, speaking it out, saying what it is, and being clear. Now, you don't have to know the whole staircase, like Martin Luther King says, to to know your dream. You just got to start with the first step. So, Writing it down and getting clarity would be the first step, recognizing what your dreams are and dreaming big enough. I can remember the first time that I spoke it out loud. Patrice Washington, one of my favorites, since she's been on the podcast, she uh, is the money maven. Um, She was on the Steve Harvey show as the money maven. I was on the internet and for some peculiar reason she was on there and I think she was working with Mark Burnett um it was called Thunderdome where you fund a big dream and she started saying for you to say your big dream out there and don't wish you woulda coulda shoulda make sure you you do this because even if you didn't win the Thunderdome, you'd be one step closer to people seeing your dream, recognizing your dream, and getting attention around your dream. So that was kind of the convincing strategy. So I wrote my dream out, and I was so like embarrassed to say it out loud, the, the whole, who should I, who am I to do this? And it was, I want to travel the world and help women with their self-confidence and self-esteem through building health. And do you know that within 10 minutes of putting that out there on the internet, the Steve Harvey show called me? That's how fast things can happen. and you. I'm going to have to leave in the show notes some of my other crazy things because (laughs) there's a lot of things that I've spoken out and said it out with faith and they happened. And I just think what the words you speak are very powerful, especially when you back them up with intention, heart, and action. And I remember being in 
the Make Your Dreams a Reality course with Tim's story. And he was asking us what our dream was. And I there left off the part because that was the part that sounded so big that this little middle town girl wanted to travel the world to help women. (laughs) So I didn't put the part about traveling the world. And he called me out. He's like, I see you there. And I have that actually his voice recording on one of my episodes. So I'll try to look that up and put it in the show notes. I see you there and you know, I care about you. And then he said, you're not only going to help women in America, but you're going to help women around the world. (laughs) And I didn't even put that on there. So I felt like that was a surreal moment of being called out. And I really feel like that God directs our footsteps and that we all have a purpose to be on the planet. If we are still alive and kicking, there is purpose for us to achieve and following your heart and the God winks and the God ideas today. That is what makes a big dream possible when we're dreaming many times we're we think a dream is you know going to college which it is or just if we wanted to be uh, an aerobics instructor or we wanted to be an engineer or a writer but i encourage you today that there's something bigger than us and when you have a dream that involves more people more people than you and your, you know, uh, your family, like it's a big dream that that is a God idea. It's a God idea because it requires so much from you. And we have to be willing to obey that call when we feel that nudge and it just keeps pulling us and drawing us and nagging in us and speaking to us. And we are sitting in our inaction, our unbelief that it could possibly, are you talking to me, God? Are you, am I really hearing this right? I mean, I had to test that out. And I don't know if you guys have ever heard me tell the story about my grandpa, but he would pinch the leather to make sure it was real until he pinched a hole in his shoe. And so I would just say to you today, if you've gotten one, two, three, you know, how many time nudges do we need from God to take action on our dreams And along the way, when you are dreaming big, you got to be careful who you're telling your dreams to and make sure you pick mentors that are aligned with your passion and your purpose. Uh, You might get a mentor telling you, I had one saying, if I mention God, that means that I am a, you know, giving a religious talk. And I got to say to you, Does talking about flowers make you a gardener? No. And so, uh, like Forbes said on this show, I was on her show the other day, that just because you don't believe in a pencil, she was holding a pencil up, doesn't mean the pencil isn't real. And so be careful who you're sharing your big dreams with, because sometimes It could either propel you forward or it could stop you in your tracks. They might be telling you all the reasons why you can't, why it might be too hard to write that book, why there's a gem on every corner and you shouldn't, you shouldn't do that. Why you're too old to be a fitness competitor and, you know, you should slow down because you're going too fast at your age. Do you see where I'm going with this? You cannot put a big voice or a big dream in a small mind. Not to say that those people always have small minds, but they don't know what's within you. How can they know what's within you if you don't know what's within you? If you don't even recognize 
you, you know, we don't even recognize what's within us until we put ourselves to the test. And the biggest thing I can think about is the Spartan race. When I did the Spartan and I am just totally putting myself through the paces, finding out what I'm made of and realizing I'm a lot tougher than I thought. So much so that it gives you belief in everything that you do. When you push through those hard things, when you do something hard and you are accomplish it, it just gives you faith and belief that you can do the next hard, scary thing. And big dreams can feel scary. And many of us are not allowing ourselves to dream big. So don't let someone else's doubt today cancel out your dreams. If you have something that is feeling really good to you, let it feel good. And just start stepping into that today. You never know where that could lead. And when I was at our Christmas party for the Sisterhood of Sweat, on Friday on the 10th. And I had women telling me what an awesome community I've created. I felt on top of the world because that is all I ever wanted when I started it. That was the vision I had. And you have to protect your dreams. You have to protect what's in your heart. You have to fight for it. You got to take action on it. You've got to create it. And then you have to protect your environment if you want to have a great community. You have to be willing to go through the trenches to get what you want. But first step, again, is simply allowing yourself to dream, to know what your dreams are, to call them out into the universe so that you can actualize them. So when you're looking for who to surround yourself with, look for the people that speak life into your dreams, that make you feel like sunshine when you hang around them, that don't drain your energy because you're going to need energy for those big dreams. You're going to need your energy. And there are bubble, uh, I want to call them prickers, balloon prickers. Uh, bubble bursters out there. So surround yourself with the people that don't put a lens of limitation on your vision. Many times the people closest to you cannot see your gifts of greatness. And instead of wasting a lot of energy, trying to prove yourself to them, focus on building your dreams. Because as my friend said to me the other day, a lion doesn't need to roar. And when you're accomplishing your dreams, they will speak. They will speak out loud. And I love this quote, dreams come in a size too big so that we may grow into them. And that is exactly what I feel like I have seen in my own experience, from the very first studio I had to where I am now. And the vision is evolving. And it's a big vision. It's a big dream. And we just have to take one step at a time, just like I said before, because we can't see the whole staircase. You start seeing it and you may be able to connect the dots as you look back, as Steve Jobs says, But when you start, you're only maybe you might only have one piece of your dream, but that is big enough to start because as we start stepping into it, we're going to grow. And last but not least, the future belongs to those who believe in the beauty of their dreams. Eleanor Roosevelt. So I just talked today about the first step for your new year is realizing what your dream is. The second would be going after it. I hope everyone has a happy holiday and 
we'll talk more about this in the upcoming episodes. Bye, everybody. Have a great weekend. And I hope that all of our listeners have enjoyed this podcast. And if you guys have really enjoyed this, please review us in iTunes and also share this episode with your friends and your loved ones. Thanks again for listening to the Sisterhood of Sweat. 